Keep it sexy. Uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis, we have some lovely guests out here tonight. Yes, One of uh, an actor I truly love, Carl Urban, is going to be out oh, here in just a moment. Yeah, you might know from The Boys. He was Eom, he was Eomer in The Lord of the Rings, Bones on Star Trek. He's, he's he was Scourge in Ra Thor Ragnarok. Right, fantastic, dramatic, funny. He could do it all. And uh, Congressman Adam Kinzinger is going to be out here in Woo. just a moment. Yeah. Just a moment. We got a break coming up. We got a Fourth of July uh, break coming up here to celebrate America and you know to, to, to you know cool down our, our burning heads from all that's been happening yes, in the indeed. world. What do you have any plans? What are you doing over the break? You know, I'm, I'm going to try to recover for a couple of days, nice. and then I'm going to record. What? Uh, yeah, you can record an album. You can do an album. Oh, excellent. If you need me to come in and shake a maraca or something, you know. You know, I hear you've you got know. a mean triangle. <laughs> I do. I can wail. I thank you for asking. I'm going to be in South Carolina. <laughs> uh, what are you? What are you doing? Uh... I'm just, you know me, baby. I'm just going to keep it sexy the entire time. Hey. Because it's just me and Evie. We're empty nesting now. Evie and I are empty nesting now, and that's all about keeping it sexy. Got it. Right. Do it. Yeah. Don't tell her. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is a six-term U.S. congressman from the state of Illinois and one of two Republicans serving on the House Select Committee investigating the events of January 6th. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Congressman Adam Kinzinger. <laughs> Hey! It's good to see you again. It's great to be here. Um, I, I want to just start off with a, a little bouquet of gratitude. Uh, as I've said before on the show, my, my immediate feeling when these hearings started, because we didn't know what these were going to be like, um, y'all knew what they were going to be like because mm -hmm. you've been gathering this information and really been playing your cards close to your chest for the past year. I mean, I've seen you many times being interviewed, <laughs> you and Representative Cheney, and, and you've all said, like, um, where we're gathering information and we hope to present to this American people. It's not people. easy to do. You're like, I want to say. Yeah. I want to say what we're seeing. Because you, how long have you known some of the stuff that we know that is blowing our minds here? We've known it a while. And, you know, it just every day that goes by, though, we get more and more information. People coming forward. And, and I, I don't, I have not ceased to be amazed at the kind of stuff we still continue to learn. And, you know, yesterday is a great example of that. Well, I'm, I'm, I am uh, filled with gratitude from the very first moment that I saw the first hearing that you guys did, did uh, in uh, prime time a couple weeks ago because, you know, people can have different policies, but it is good to see people from both sides of the aisle agree that there should be a United States of America yeah. and representative democracy should Amen. continue. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, you very much for that. Yeah. Now... So yesterday, as you're saying, quite a day. It was a it was a surprise hearing. Surprise to us. Was it a surprise to you? It was a little bit of a surprise, yeah. It was kind of in the last couple of days we had made the decision to do this and, and learned a lot of the new information. So yeah, I wasn't as surprised, but it was a surprise. Well, what was why was it critical to have the hearing, you know, so suddenly? So it's a number of reasons. There was such important information we wanted to get out. As you saw at the end of the hearing, there have been threats coming in, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it'd be a shame if somebody knew you were talking to the committee. Sure. But the other thing is, every time a piece of information comes out, we get more folks coming forward. And I think some of the things that Cassidy Hutchison, who, by the way, is a brave American, you know, 25, 26 years old, mm -hmm. it just... Showing far more courage uh, than her boss. Showing far more courage than her boss and showing far more courage than 99.8% of Republican members of Congress. And, or 100 Mm -hmm. And when she came forward, she comes forward with a lot of this information, and now all of a sudden you have people that'll want to come clarify their statements or actually truly maybe remember being part of something that they forgot about. So it's important for us to get well, it out. Well, uh, Congressman Thompson said last night, after hearing this kind of uh, <laughs> testimony, if there's anyone out there who perhaps finds their courage or, or, or finds their memory. Yeah. And, are, are, <laughs> and there are people who are saying, okay, I'll come in. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there's people that are saying they'll come in. There are people that have talked to us already that are going to want to come in now and maybe clarify what they meant when mm -hmm. they said something under oath. And look, all we want to do is just get to the bottom of this. The American people deserve answers and a democracy to survive and to function. There are people right now dying in Ukraine 
to defend democracy. And it's like we can't be in any more of a hurry to get rid of ours here. All you need is people to recognize that your vote counts and who you vote for wins. That's how it or wins or loses. That's how a democracy survives. And right now, half of the country has been convinced that's not the case. Well, as you said, as you said yesterday was startling testimony from Ms. Hutchinson. What what did she reveal in those hearings to the American people that you found most important? There was a lot of things. I, I think one of the most important pieces of information, Donald Trump knew there were guns in the crowd. Donald Trump wanted to get rid of the magnetometers because he's still obsessed with crowd size. He still is. And he was worried that it didn't look like enough people were at the ellipse. So he's like, take the magnetometers away, bring them in. I know there's guns, but they're not here to shoot me. They're not here to hurt me. What mm -hmm. that says is he knows they're here to hurt somebody. And we also know that he wanted to go down to the Capitol. All you have to do is put those basic pieces of information together and say this was a dangerous man who wanted to overthrow the will of the people. That was one of the most important things. And then just her courage all the way around and talking about some of what she had seen in the White House. And, and uh, it's, it's, I, I, I was inspired. I went down, we gave her, we shook her hand. I went down to shake her hand and she gave me a hug. And I just, I lost it. I don't think the cameras caught it, but I'm just like, because I understand a little bit, just a little bit of what it took for her to do that and the sacrifices she's now going to face. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Congressman Adam Kinzinger, everybody. Stick around.